Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I do have cinnamon in my coffee. Um, I'm finally, I feel like I'm a thousand percent now with the um, with the uh, health part of things. After I'm finally kind of healing up from the uh, ablation surgery, and I'm starting to feel better. I did have a terrible headache yesterday. I had the worst headache I've ever had in my life, and the reason was, for those of you that aren't familiar, when I was talking earlier in the week about how I had shortness of breath, I, I talked to you about how I had saline in my body that uh, we had to get out. So they gave me water pills. A water pill basically sucks all the water out of you wherever it is. And so you go to the bathroom a lot until until you're pretty dried out. Well, one of the side, effect, side effects I learned yesterday is that you your body gets pretty dried out. And if you're not drinking a lot of water, it can cause what happened to me yesterday. I had the worst headache that I have ever had in my entire life. My wife has always had a problem with migraine headaches. Well, I don't get headaches. But yesterday, I had what could only be described as a migraine headache. And I'm sure that it had to do with the water pills. So I called the doctor and said, look, let me get off these water pills and start actually drinking some water and reliquify my body because I, I feel like that's what caused the headache. Um, okay, now, this is something um, that was sent to me, to, my dad told me about this this morning. I want you to, I don't, I don't ever, hardly ever, recommend that you go and watch Bitcoin videos. But this is a Bitcoin video that I think that is worthy of you watching. This is from a, a uh, YouTuber, and he goes by the Crypto Lark. He's a big, big Bitcoin YouTuber, and he's more of a technical guy and shows charts and all of that type of thing. But the, what he says in this video is um, is very. I think he's. I think he hits it right on the head here. What he said first is basically, and and I'll let you hear it from him, but I'll summarize it in my own words too. Um, what he basically says is that Bitcoin miners, it costs them about eight thousand dollars to mine one Bitcoin with all of their expenses and the energy use and all of that. Okay, and what he's what he was basically opining, I guess you would say, is that once you hit that line of eight thousand, a few things happen. One is that the smaller miners they begin start they start more or less start to have financial issues, and so they have to sell some of their Bitcoin, thus tanking the price even further down. And then I think the the gist of what I got out of his video is the other thing that happens is the larger miners probably start shorting and, and or selling some Bitcoin to try to drive some of those smaller miners out of business. That's the, what I took away from his video. The, and then and then altcoins, unfortunately, to this day, there is still to a certain extent, if Bitcoin really tanks, the rest of the market follows it, including XRP. But what, I, I wanted to tell you that and summarize what his thoughts were to to let you know that this is why times like this are, are such great buying opportunities. Um, I just went in and bought myself more XRP. And th the reason is these are the kind of things I've watched happen since 2013 over and over and over. And it, the important thing is that these, these crashes never have anything to do with the fundamentals of this industry and where it's going. They never have anything to do with what Ripple's doing for the use case for XRP. They never have anything to do with the ecosystem that's being built for XRP. They have to do with short-term manipulations and politics, whether it's China trying to do a head fake and announce they're going to do a ban or whatever. Anytime these are the things that are driving the market down and, and, and XRP is doing nothing more than just following the prices down and everybody gets freaked out. Those are buying opportunities from my perspective because that's, that's when I do a lot of my buying is because that those are the points you've got to, no matter what the reasons are, when the, when the reasons for people selling XRP 
are reasons that aren't logical, when they don't have anything to do with XRP itself, that can be nothing but the perfect buying opportunity for me. Now, it would be different if something came out, some piece of news about Ripple itself that was actually legitimate and it was something horrible that someone at Ripple did or whatever, that would be different. But it's never that. That's what I've learned. It's never those kind of things. It's always manufactured things and different types of manipulation that are going on. And that is what you have to take out of these things. And this is coming from some, I've been in this game since 2013. I have seen this. I've ridden this roller coaster up and down and up and down. And it can be, it can make you sick at times, but um, it won't make you sick if you understand that bigger picture. And, and you, and there's two things that, the two reasons it won't make you sick. If you understand the bigger picture and if you have not invested more than you can afford to lose and whether it goes up or down does not affect your livelihood and how you uh, pay your bills and those types of things. If you've got those two, but if you have those two things covered, then these things are just temporary temporary blips on the radar screen for you. That's what it is for me. Okay. Um, and then Galgatron makes a very good point here. Whale beat down 101. Short Bitcoin abuse media influence to terrify market with un unsubstantiated FUD, FUD. Wait for the market to tank. Long BTC. Issue retractive statement. Profit. Hope you made lots of money, Lawmaster. That was one uh, your one trick pony. Now you're the onion. Um, and he's talking about this guy, I guess, was the guy, one of the people who was per, who was trying to put out the news that Binance had a, an office raided. But this he's he's helping to make the point that I'm making here. Have you noticed the last two days while the markets have been tanking, all of these people, all of the FUD piles in. Um, you had Binance. They announced that Binance was having their Shanghai office raided by China which turned out not to be true. Then yesterday, someone wrote up that one of these Bitcoin guys wrote a FUD piece that Chris Larson came out and defended. Uh, they basically said that Ripple were tax cheats and all this. It's not a coincidence that all of these pylons happen. Why it's almost like a coordinate uh, coordinated effort by these people who are bad guys to tank the market. And that's what you need to understand. When these are the types of reasons that that this is happening, th these are this is a positive thing if you understand and you see this for what it is. Because if you're because what that makes you, it makes you not one of the sheep. You are not one of the sheep if you understand the real reasons behind why these things are happening. And then it becomes a buying opportunity. Now. Look at a guy. Don't take my word for that. Take Charles Hoskinson's word. This is a guy who created Cardano. He was one of the creators of Ethereum and left to create Cardano. Charles Hoskinson goes to almost every Bitcoin conference and crypto conference that they, they, that there is. He's a guy that's plugged into the industry. This is what he says after the last couple of days. Bitcoin's price is going down. Remember everyone, after the FUD, news trading and manipulation clears out. We still have a global movement that's going to change the world. We will see 10K Bitcoin again and welcome 100K Bitcoin. Crypto is unstoppable. Crypto is the future. He knows, these guys know. Um, and then, uh, okay, so moving along here, this is from CoinDesk. The Deputy Secretary, Tre Secretary of the U.S. Treasury has raised the specter of a not-so-distant future when private digital currencies have stripped some of the power from governments. Policymakers will take a hard look at these issues, he said. That's why you want to be with a digital asset that has already been working with the regulators for longer than anyone since 2012 or so. Okay, Pont put out a good tweet today. Um, thought exercise. What if what was pre previously called mainstream media is now actually propaganda and the bloggers, YouTubers, Twitter accounts have now become the mainstream media? May be too early to claim true, but feels like an entire generation is starting to think this. There's not a question in my mind whether Anthony Pompliano is right about this. If you look at, if you turn on your television and go to the political news channels, go to CNN, go to Fox News, 
and then go to um, CNBC or MSNBC. The, the difference in, in what you see from those three channels shows you what it's like when media is bought and paid for. Um, the, and I was, telling, I was telling somebody the other day, you've got all these talking heads on like CNBC or, or all these different channels. And if you think about it, all of the talking heads, all of the people who represent the newsmakers, and these are people who get on the news, those are people that are handpicked by a central authority. It could be the CEO of Fox News or the CEO of NBC. All of these people have some type of agenda. That's a centralized television network. Well, guess what's happening out here in YouTube land? What's happening out here in YouTube land is that we're not bought and paid for. We are average people who are cropping up out of nowhere with an opinion. And guess what happens? An actual free market. The people who agree with the most of what someone's saying and think that it sounds the most reasonable, they flock to us, okay? That's what this is about. You can take any one of those personalities if they didn't have the affiliation with an NBC or whatever, and if you just put them uh, onto YouTube and they had to actually compete in a free market against those of us that are telling the truth, okay? If they actually had to come out here and compete they wouldn't be one one thousandth of the personality or, or as known as they are because they wouldn't be able to compete. They're, they're able to come. They're able to be put up there as a figurehead saying whatever it is they're saying or told to say. And they're able to be in that place because it's a centralized network. The, the idea of, of someone who has to, to create their, their um, channel from the ground up. And if you if what you're saying does not ring true with the people, you don't go anywhere. That's what this is. But we are we are all literally whether you're on Twitter or on YouTube, we are all literally right in the middle of changing the world, whether you realize it or not. OK. Um, OK. Tony Valentino. This this is interesting. This is another example of what's going on. Right in the midst of the market tanking, all of the bad guys pile in. Look at this. Stress test confirmed. Have to make certain XRPL is ready to handle um, central bank digital currency and gold, etc. And this is a tweet from Thomas Silkjare. Uh, the XRPL is currently processing roughly 90 transactions per second while being under attack by countless payments serving no purpose other than burning fees. The minimum fee has increased by two drops. Somebody has spent 40,000 XR plus XRP to activate more than 2,000 accounts that is slowly burning away all the account reserved by sending non-XRP payment transactions. This is actually a funny thing about the XRPL. If you have IOUs, you cannot risk not being able to spend it, even if your account reserve is low. As, as long as you have, have enough XRP left in the account to pay for fees, you can spend it. No matter the purpose of this activity, we're watching a distributed network handle, handling it perfectly. Bravo. You'll probably see David Schwartz weigh in on this. I think this, this kind of stuff is funny when these guys start spending money and they get rejected. Sergeant Obi-Wan, the ripple effect. Mercury FX reveals new plans for XRP. Uh, we, we covered this. Some of this is about the Santander that we've been covering. I wanted to take you down to this part right here. Mercury FX, a global currency exchange provider with offices in London, um, Hong Kong, and Cape Town, says it plans to expand its use of Ripple's XRP-powered payment solution known as ODL, on-demand liquidity. At a recent conference held by Ripple, Merc Mercury FX CEO Alistair Constance revealed the company's plans to bring ODL to Africa. Um, the company is also opening an office in Dubai to launch a corridor between the Philippines and the UAE. The Filipino market alone is worth, worth U.S. $2.5 billion a year. Sending money there typically costs about 8%. We can easily beat that rate thanks to Ripple, which means huge savings for our customers and new profit center for us. Exact the moon, though. The crypto utility guy at utility guy seven. Um, this is great right here. It is now possible from Grayscale. It is now possible to gain exposure to a diversified basket of large cap digital currencies through a publicly traded security, GDLCF. 
Now, I they have Grayscale has the GBTC. It's the only one I've been able to invest in through my IRA. Um, and so I own it. Now that what that is is just Bitcoin, okay? And you're paying a premium. So if Bitcoin's at eight thousand, you might actually be paying eighty five hundred or nine thousand for that Bitcoin. But this is just a way for you to own it without having to deal with, you know, custody and whether you're some hacker could steal your Bitcoin. You're, so that's what this is. Now you're going to be able through your IRA to get your hands on this one, which is called the GDLCF. That'll be the symbol for it. I want to show you what's in it. As of October 31st, 2019, this fund, the basket is like this. Eight, you'll hold 80.6% Bitcoin, 9.2% Ethereum, 6% XRP, 2.5% Bitcoin Cash, and 1.7% Litecoin. This would be a really good vehicle for you. I mean, I'm probably going to buy some of this whenever, if it's available. I'll go and check today and see if it's available for me, but I'm going to, I'll probably get a little bit of that myself. Okay, Luke Thomas at Luke Boy, China cleaning the system once and for all. This is a sign of a bull run, at least to, to me. But hey, what do I know? Breaking, which is known on, in Chinese crypto community for two weeks. By the way, the news is just out. Beijing-based crypto exchange BISS is arrested by local police. So China's doing their little crackdown. I've been watching these type things since 2013. And then Tony Valentino, I love how other coin holders are panicking and running for the exits. But XRP community are calm as F except for the few who bought XRP because of variable one, two, three, da, da, da. I'm calm as I can be. I hope everybody else is, but um, I just I just bought, uh, what did I buy? Just a, a decent amount of XRP this morning. Um, and here's how I did it. I was, I was, let me refresh that. Went to Coinbase. I kept having this problem with, with Coinbase. Sometimes this happens. On Coinbase, you can have money sitting in your bank account and when you push the button to buy on Coinbase, it'll say that you don't have the funds in your bank account when you actually do. So I got tired of dealing with that. And then I went over to Uphold, which Uphold does not get enough credit. Uphold is a great exchange. You can go to Uphold and open an account at Uphold.com. But Uphold is a great exchange. And I went there and decided I would just buy my XRP there if Coinbase didn't want business this morning. And the uphold came in. You can see that they are happy to hear from all of us and they're very glad to have the business. So if you don't do business with uphold, they are a U.S. exchange. It's not an exchange. It's a U.S. platform. Um, but go and open an account with uphold. These guys are, are, I've never had anything but good experiences with uphold. And they also have a way that you can earn interest on there if that's the thing you want to do. I don't do it yet, but you could. Um, Sergeant Obi Wan at Sergeant Obi Wan posted this from uh, Christine Lagarde in her new post with the European Central Bank. Um, gave a speech today, and I'm going to use that as a thumbnail, I think. Um, but show, let me show this thread. I just wanted to read this one part of her speech. She says, We need a new policy mix for a common future that is more productive, more digital, XRP, and greener not be not bitcoin which she has said before <laughs> more digital xrp and greener not bitcoin so um yeah she's uh i think that she is definitely a friend of xrp and finally the crypto utility guy utility guy seven um sent me this now we need more of this the kind of fud i don't even think you wouldn't call this fud but this is just someone with a good sense of humor in the XRP community. Trump accidentally drunk, drunk tweets secret Ripple XRP plan. And I thought this was just worthy of showing. Um, we do need to have more humor in this space. Um, the funny part about this is that Trump does not even drink. <laughs> but, but it's from XRP, the standard productions. Give them a follow and go read their coil blog. Here's a couple of their the these are all fake, by the way, but it's uh it's just a uh some comedy relief. Hey, it's Donnie. This is a uh it says the tweets have since been deleted. Hey, it's Donnie. How's my Chrissy legs guard doing? Tired of waiting. When are we going to implement the plan? It says XR 
GDP is going to level the GD playing field. China can kiss my ass. LOL. Sorry for my typos. A little too much vino, if you know what I mean. Well, this we need more of this kind of thing in this community. People to loosen up and get a good laugh. I thought this was pretty darn funny. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that I just decided to change my thumbnail to this Trump picture because I thought it made me laugh today. Thank you for listening.